Let's continue on with our discussion of constraint management, but just a brief overview of facility design. We talked a little bit about facility design way back in the introduction module, and so we'll talk about it a little bit again just to refresh, uh, but it'll be an up-tempo discussion. So the whole goal with uh, facility management, or one of the whole goals, one of the, the um, objectives is we want to minimize the amount of movement Right? Movement takes time, but it's not time where the product is being, or the service is either being is being enhanced in, in any way. Okay? So right now my son is working a, a little bit on new home construction, and they're putting in uh, plumbing piping. And uh, the mantra on the site is, if you're going to get something out of the truck, you're taking garbage or something else with you so that you minimize how much of redundant movement you do. You don't go out to the truck to get something and come back and then, oh, hey, i got to take the garbage out and take the garbage out later. No, you combine it all up. Okay. When I was in, uh, was in the military and uh, was in... Uh, um, in boot camp, you know, we'd have to be learning how to do the uh, giving out orders and so on. You know, we had the list of concurrent activities that you got people doing while you were preparing the plan, if you will, right? There's a certain set of things you needed to get done. While you're doing your thing, you don't want everybody out there being idle. You got them doing some things in some preparatory work. Okay? So we have that. We want to make sure that we use space Efficiently, of course, right? Because whether we're in a warehouse, an industrial setting, a retail setting, whichever one, that space is not free. Uh, and, and so you don't want to be paying for space that you don't use or will not in the near future use. We want to use labor efficiently. Duh, right? Again, labor is not free. Uh, it costs money and you, you have... Um, you know, especially if you have skilled people, you don't want them idle, right? You've got to get that concurrent activity going, uh, or you want to keep make sure that they're always busy doing something because you're paying them for all that time, and you want to minimize their downtime. We always want to eliminate those bottlenecks. Right? A whole sort of flow, the whole thinking of operations management is one of continual improvement. We're always trying to make something a little bit better. Not necessarily in huge leaps. Um, most making things better, in, air, in, you know, air, in quotations, is it's a process of little improvements, little improvements, little improvements. You can't always be swinging for home runs all the time. Right? Hits, bases on balls, those are very, very important too. Right? I'm a big fan of Moneyball, so if you've seen the movie or read the book... Okay, you know where I'm coming from. So we're eliminating bottlenecks. And once we eliminate one bottleneck, and doggone it, another bottleneck pops up. <laughs> we go and we tackle that one. And we tackle that one. Boop, another one walks like guacamole, okay? And we want to have our design, you know, prepared for the future. Makes sense, right? We'll be able to adapt to change relatively quickly and reasonably Ooh, really vague words but I, I know but we want to have space for future expansion but not too much space we want to have space to maybe do this kind of uh, arrangement or rearrange the processes in this way but maybe we're not going to do that right away but we're going to do it in the near future and so we want to have the space to, to be able to do that and so on and of course just want more space just to increase capacity very, very simple. Okay, so basic layout, process layout. Um, so activities are grouped together right, according to the function they perform. Uh, so uh, the school of business, right, somewhat now. We mix a little bit, um, but you know, you sort of have you know decision sciences, which is the department that I'm in, are kind of clumped together, and you have marketing kind of clumped together. We may share a common hallway. So right now, I'm sort of clumped together with some decision uh, science folks, but I'm in a hallway where the OB people, organizational behavior people, are clumped together in another part of the hallway. And so there's kind of this this sort of grouping according by function. And, okay, that's fine. Department store, same way. So you walk into a department store um, and you'll see clothing here. You'll see grocery over there. So if they have grocery electronics in another spot, pharmacy over there. 
a health and beauty in another place. Right? You don't typically see clothes in the uh, in the cereal aisle in the grocery store part, right? So makes sense. You organize it that way. Equipment is general purpose. I'm mean, gonna go to got? I have a chair. I have a desk. I have a laptop. Doesn't get much more general purpose than that. Pretty much anybody could use that. You know, we can a chair. Anybody who needs a chair, there's the chair. Desk, desk, laptop. You know, fairly versatile piece of com computer equipment, right? So general purpose. Same thing if you look at the department store. You got what do you have? You have some shelves. Some uh, signage might be a little bit specialty, but you know the shelving can be moved around. Right? Can be used by somebody else. Now, this uh, introduces some flexibility. It, it can be um, considered uh, inefficient because the laptop is maybe not optimized for me as an educator. I can improve it as best as I can so that it suits my particular purpose, but maybe there's, you know, I can think of it, I won't go into it, but I can think of, you know, hey, it would be cool if there was this keystroke or this switch or this button that did this and this and this that was very particular to me, right? So that would make me uh, more efficient. Uh, but then that laptop wouldn't be able to be used by anybody else. Okay. So here's an example of a process layout. Uh, Lathe is just a piece of uh, equipment that it's sort of like an automated process now, right? So you can make a table leg with a lathe, and make it like it's, it's got the nice molding to it, and so on. Uh, you could also do um, use a lathe to make molds, so that if, uh, if you're making a mold. You can, uh, you'll see lathes there. Milling, you know, smoothing it out, making it nice and usable. Drilling is drilling and grinding and all that kind of stuff. So you have all those activities that, and they're, they're sort of set up in, in a general sense for how people flow through, right? Um, you receive, so receiving. Then we goes through the lathe, which is maybe a, a kind of an initial uh, processing process. Uh, Initial processing, uh, milling, drilling, grinding, painting, making it all pretty, putting everything together, and then back out uh, into shipping where it's then sent off to our end customers. So there's sort of a, a flow through there, right? You flow through the department store. Maybe you're one of those people that starts in groceries and then, then moves into to clothing, electronics, pharmacy, health and beauty, and then out you go. You come into the school of business. You ask, you know, your your stats instructor some questions. Maybe you move over to ask a OB, uh, your, uh, one of the HR instructors a uh, human resources question, or you're taking a new human resources analytics class, and you got questions about that, uh, and we kind of flow through it in that sense. Okay, product layout. No, I was a process layout. So, product layout. That's you know, what we kind of understand is the traditional manufacturing process of some sort of assembly line. There is a line. Things start. Things get added. Completed process goes out. Now, this doesn't necessarily have to be uh, making cars or something like that. This could be me at the bank. I walk in, get in the lineup. Talk to the teller, leave, boom, 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 right? Now, the bank wants to make it more of a more involved process where you, know, you go talk to an advisor for some other bank product, but it kind of flows in a, in a line. Okay, uh, and so car, car processing, anything mass production, cell phones, a lot of electronics now flow this way, so uh, a, lot, a lot of electronics stamping a, a circuit board uh, works very similarly this way as well. Uh, more of an assembly line process. Uh, now, the flow of the work is, is fairly orderly and, and set. Okay. It is very um, efficient for that purpose. 
Okay. Uh, the problem is it's inflexible. Okay. So you have mass production and it produces a lot of certain items but can't necessarily change very easily what items it, it then produces. It could be a huge, or uh, often there is a, a bit of a mobilization, demobilization, setup costs and, and time involved in switching over a product line from one mass produced item to another mass produced item. Okay. So great if you have stable demand, not so great if that demand is sometimes really high and then alternatively at other times really, really low. Okay. Fixed position layout, right? We talked about this earlier as well. Uh, product can't be moved. Uh, ships, houses, aircraft, hockey arenas. You do. It does not come to you. You go to it. Okay. So, all the equipment, uh, the workers, the material, all go to the site, and the product is assembled on that site. We do not like it when houses move. Uh, we do not like it when aircraft move, when they don't already have wings and engine attached to it. We don't like it when hockey arenas move. Apparently, we don't like it when hockey teams move either, but that's a different issue. Okay. So the layout is all specialized to that particular product. Okay, So one, you know, building a hockey arena one minute is, is not the same as building a housing complex the other minute. So each have its unique um, issues and arrangements. So a lot of specialization there, which drives up the cost, of course. Cellular layout is sort of a hybrid of, of, of things where we can bring maybe aspects of a process environment in with aspects of a product uh, layout and sort of do a, a little bit of, of both. So you have kind of mini mini assembly lines uh, as part of a of a process okay. uh, the idea is perhaps an item can be done in little batches like little pieces of the item can be done in little batches and then and then moved on so whereas maybe you just don't do the one thing uh, a, a given worker or a given team uh, can do a couple of different things to the product before it moves on to somebody to another uh, cell or moves further down in its uh, in its processing line. Okay. Um, and again, it, like everything else, it's got its uh, advantages and disadvantages. The reduced um, uh, material handling time is its biggest one of its biggest advantages, right? Because Again, if you have a product that requires a lot of little things done to it, you may want to bundle up those little things into uh, one team doing all the little things and then adding that to the product, product before it moves on to the next team uh, where another bunch of little things are added to it. So the overall picture is sort of like a product lineup, but then there's little you know, process uh, teams that are building components to the overall whole. Now, the disadvantage is uh, your workers need to be a little bit more flexible, which means you know training is an issue. Instead of doing the one thing, they now do a selection of things. Now, from, from uh, a motivation, organizational behavior point of view, this may not be the, the, the worst thing in the world because it gives workers a variety of tasks to do, keeps them from becoming inattentive and bored and, and that kind of thing. And, you know, they might be happier doing a couple of things, a little bit of variety. The same reason why I don't teach one course. I teach three different courses just to give me uh, just a little bit of variety. Oh, last thing. Huh, how could I miss that? Increased capital investment. Because we're building all these little cells, it might be cheaper to build one big hole and process everything in the mass production um, in a mass production uh, line, but uh, again, these little assemblies, it might make for a, a better, higher quality product and happier workers and more attentive workers and more engaged workers. And so we spend a little bit more on capital, a little bit more on training, but we get uh, better uh, material handling, reduced setup time, and so on. 
Okay, so here's just a little picture of a cellular lineup, and you can kind of see the each given worker one, two, three is working a, a couple of different tasks depending on, you know, what's going on with the with the uh, this little process. Okay, so kind of neat that way. Next segment, theory of constraints. So this is like the big to do in constraint management is this theory of constraints. That and uh, yeah, the theory of constraints, and then a little bit of math involved in here, but not a lot of math. Most important thing is get to use your imagination. Your creative side becomes very important in this unit, so it makes it super fun. Not just ordinary fun, but super fun.